listeners and subscribers hope all is well boy things sure are heating up aren't they so if you've gone back and if you've been with this channel since its inceptions you know that i've had a uh, something i've had my thumb on a few things for a while now and i see now that it's starting to be broached in the mainstream media again we got to drudge this topic up because we got to talk about it we got to talk about the UFOs, okay? And while I believe these things are something else entirely, that doesn't mean we can't flesh out this subject because it has to do with something that's very important. It's a very important subject, all right? Because we talked about how the Pentagon uh, revealed that it investigates UFOs, okay? The Navy is changing how they are going to report uh, UFOs now. Uh, Navy pilots have been reporting their sightings, okay? Back when they were releasing, I think it was season... Eight or season nine, the re-release of the X Files, within that same week, the week or the week before or the week after, somewhere sandwiched in between, um, the FBI released their UFO files. Re really strange, you know, all, all of this stuff happening all at once, and it's it's sort of been compounding on itself in the past two years. And while I haven't I haven't touched on it recently, uh, I've always I've always had my thumb on it. And I've always been researching this stuff, and I always keep my eyes in uh, ears open for this kind of stuff because I think it's important. For example, it was Werner von Braun, okay, our, our, the father of our space program, that said that the threat du jour was essentially going to be communist, and then when that ran its course, we would see terrorists probably from the Middle East, and we're seeing that right now, and then once that ran its course, we would see a threat from space, okay? And this was the father of our space program. Uh, I'm willing to bet that there's something there to that, okay? I'm willing to bet that there's something there to that. I don't necessarily know how this stuff is going to manifest. Honestly, I think it depends on us when we're talking about the powers that be doing some kind of disclosure, if you will, okay? I think there's two major scenarios. Either these things are going to be painted as a threat, or they're going to be painted as our saviors okay i honestly i really don't buy the threat because they've been here since at least 1947 apparently and if they wanted to eat us or attack us they could have did something then when our defense systems you know were not essentially and our defense system would still be not to an advanced technologically advanced race okay um I don't, so i don't tend to buy that the violent scenario, space invader scenario, although it makes perfect sense if we're going to continue this military industrial complex, if we're going to have an excuse to give up our rights and freedoms. So just like Osama bin Laden was the big boogeyman, um, you know, back during the 9-11 years, space invaders would be the big boogeyman and you got to give up your rights so we can protect you from these space invaders. I, I could totally see that as a potentiality, although in my mind, why did they wait so long, okay? As seeing them as our saviors, I could I could t totally see that as well, because hey, the new technology. Okay, we're getting ready for a paradigm shift. We can clean up some of our some of our technology and all this stuff. And again, I don't think this is technology that's really new. I think it's stuff they've had on the shelf for a while. They just wanted to bring it out within the context of a new paradigm, so the controllers can still have their monopoly. Their monopoly. Okay, they can still have their power. All right, so those are the two scenarios I see. But what's really interesting about that that quote that says, you know, essentially we're going to see communists, uh, terrorists, and then space invaders. Uh, we've seen the communists and we see the terrorists. The question is, are we being conditioned right now by the mainstream media mouthpiece to accept the eventual um, space scenario? I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's interesting because these are powerful people. And if you know anything about sidereal time, you know that NASA missions are set on sidereal time. Uh, essentially, the alignment of the planets and the stars and moons and stuff like this. Uh, th somebody has an astrological affinity for, for numbers, okay? And even there's a really interesting piece of information about you know the Kennedy brothers their death they all died within the same sidereal hour which is essentially like saying you know, what if I told you that all the Kennedy uh, incidents happened between you know noon and 1 p.m. that'd be incredible right well that's essentially what happened in, in sidereal time so that tells me that somebody has an affinity for this stuff okay somebody who's powerful enough to set NASA space shots and space missions on um, based on astrological alignments as well as major political incidents. Okay, I think there's something there to that. Okay, because I think that the powers that be, they're more in tune with something else. For example, there was a. Um, the, the Rothschilds named one of their prodigies after Nimrod, right? A Sumerian god. So these guys, they give their homage, they know about that stuff that's pretty occulted to us, and, and uh, occulted in the sense where it's hidden, okay? Uh, esoteric 
things that people aren't necessarily uh, familiar with. It's not everyday information, uh, at least not to the folks out there bebopping around who are sort of uh, clueless, okay? But just looking at, all this, looking at all this stuff, I think we're getting prepared for something. For, for example, what if we see another Phoenix flyover except maybe this time during the day? Okay, so there's a lot of interesting scenarios to play out. I think that if you look at the deck, they've got it stacked quite nicely. And I think the cards that they play are based on our response. And I think they do small tests. And I mentioned it before, you know, things like War of the Worlds to gauge just exactly where the population is at to see what kind of potential response they would have. And they condition us through pop culture, movies, music, television, all this stuff. Uh, so we, we get desensitized to a certain idea. I think that's what they're jockeying for. I think that's what they're playing for when it comes to this UFO topic. I mean, the mainstream media mouthpiece. Anytime you start to hear a mantra, you can guarantee they're getting you ready for something. I mean, hasn't Iran been in the news lately? You know, Trump saying, I don't want war with Iran. I, I want peace. War does this, that, and the other. Okay, but he's arming Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia, citing raising tensions over Iran. And I've said it before, so essentially we're talking about war by proxy. Um, and it, it would make sense when we're talking about Saudi Arabia. I, again, I've said this before because they were pumping you know, salt water into their reserve to get enough pressure to, to meet the oil demand quotas, and they could, they could have potentially damaged their oil fields by doing this, which is why... It, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia took a backseat to Venezuela when Venezuela proved they had the largest oil reserves. And we see the destabilization campaigns happening there. We see this destabilization happen with Iran, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq. All the stuff happened in the Middle East. I think we're seeing uh, initiatives to sort of get power into strategic places so that they can leverage that, that power geopolitically. And one of the best ways to do that currently is oil. You know, you control oil, you control the nations, you control food, you control the people. And make no mistake, that's exactly what this stuff is about. This is about control. They've got the money, they're getting the power, and now they're clamoring for all the control. And I think as we get ready to see the end game, I think as we get ready to see this stuff peak, we'll see the different power pyramid uh, factions sort of jockey for their biggest slice of the pie. And that might be their biggest downfall. So hopefully we'll see... Uh, some kind of end to this. But before that, I think we'll see some very interesting things within the context of what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. And uh, it, it's something that we shouldn't shy away from because the reality is, is, you know, there's people who look into the banking cartels and there's people who look into government cover-ups and there's people who look into UFOs and there's people, you know, they look, they have, they get specialized. They're in their own thing. But if you throw any of this out of hand without having looked into it, you're going to be missing a big piece of the puzzle and you won't, you won't be knowing what's going on. All right, because this is this is all one big ball of wax, and in a lot of ways, one thing connects to the other. And if we throw it out, uh, we'll be missing a lot. I think we'll be missing a lot. California Carter signing off.